Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Today we are doing my beauty inventory video for the start of 2020. I know we are several months in, but these are the figures as they were before I decluttered anything, before I finished anything this year. This is what I opened 2020 with. I was going to do my 2020 like beauty rehab video first and then I thought no, I'll do the figures first. So that the next video is talking about how I'm trying to tackle those figures. So that's why I'm doing it this week. I don't honestly, I wasn't going to do this. But then a few people said these are like their favourite kind of videos to watch. So um, I decided just to do it. It's a lot of figures. In terms of visuals, I have already done this on my at Rose Keats Makeup Rehab Instagram account. So I will try and put screenshots of all those pictures that I took to accompany the categories as we go along so that you can get a visual on what those numbers and values look like. I'm going into the third year of my beauty no buy and this is one of the things that I would honestly say really helped when I decided I was going to do that in the first place at the very first year. I was kind of in a place where I was mentally ready to do it and I knew I'd sort of come out of denial and accept that I definitely had been buying far too much particularly beauty stuff but really taking inventory and getting the the values just totally opened my eyes and every time that I was sort of tempted I would kind of think about the fact that I have nearly thirty thousand dollars worth of stuff and that would that would successfully put me off. I am in the UK so on that note we say inventory in the UK that's the correct way to pronounce it I know in America um it's more like inventory. No, it's not. That's how we say it. How is it you guys say it? Inventory? Tory? I think you really pronounce the O. <laughs> um, so just in case anyone's like, what is, what's going on here? Um, yeah, inventory is the, the British way to say inventory. But yeah, I am in the UK, but I have done the values in dollars. The reason for that is that basically the first year that I was going into this, I was really, really reliant on Makeup Rehab subreddit. I was reading that on a daily basis. I'm not the best at being most sort of active on it, so I didn't post very much on it. But a lot of the activities and things that people were doing, I would just join in with for myself. And it was through um, that subreddit that I came across the Reverse Rouge Challenge, which was started by Elle here on YouTube. Um, she's actually Canadian. So she's talking about Canadian dollars, I presume. But I've converted the prices of things into American US prices, so that's where my values come from. It was partly because I was doing these challenges and participating in the Makeup Rehab subreddit so much, where so much of what was being discussed was in dollars and was American, and it just kind of... I wanted to partake in that, and I wanted to hit Reverse Rouge with a thousand dollars worth of product so that I know I had definitely done it that rather than a thousand pounds and it's also partly that I have done most of my shopping on holiday particularly my beauty shopping um for the past number of years particularly some of my things I've had for a longer period things often were out first in America if I was there before a collection launched here I would buy it there or back in the day, not so much a case anymore, but back in the day there was a lot of brands you couldn't, you couldn't get here and um, that you could only get in the US. So actually a lot of my collection has been purchased over the years in America. So actually dollars are probably more representative of what I've actually bought most of it in anyway. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's an indication, it's an idea. I mean, a lot of the things, for example, if you've got something free as a gift with purchase or it's been like a point Perkins photo or whatever, you've not actually paid for it anyway. So the fact it's on your inventory with a value is kind of completely irrelevant. So it's more about the value of what that'll be when you've used it up rather than what you've paid for it anyway so it's in dollars it's a really big inventory as you're about to see so the work involved in also coming up with pound prices for half of these things would just be like i can't even begin to face thinking about doing that so this is in dollars so if that upsets you even though i don't really know why you would be that upset but you'd be surprised some people get upset about these things it is what it is so yeah without any further ado let's just get into the figures 
I will start off with makeup. I think it's A, it's what most people are probably interested in and B, it is the biggest problem for me. So face primers, I have 12 that are valued at $347.93. My goal to use up this year is seven. I have 13 foundations worth $513.64 and my goal is to use up four foundations this year. Correctors, that is my kind of non-problematic category. I have four correctors worth $106.79 and I want to use up two this year. Concealers, I have 12 worth $265.19 and I want to try and use up three concealers this year. I have 17 face powders worth $492.99 and I'm aiming to use up two face powders this year. I have three contour powders worth 76.86. I'm not aiming to use any of them up this year. I have nine bronzers worth $109.69. And again, I'm not aiming to use any of those up. I do have one bronzer in my project pan, so my kind of opening goal is just to try and hit pan on it, but I don't think I'll finish it. I'm not really a bronzer person. Most of the bronzers that I have are actually in palettes. They're not things that I've bought individually, so they're not, although I have nine, it's not a category that I'm hugely worried about. It's not a product I'm very attracted to. I know that I don't really use a lot of bronzer, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, blush is my first embarrassingly problematic category. I have 93, 93, mm -hmm, 93, horrifying concept, worth $1,641.86. Again, I'm not expecting to use any of them up this year. I think for me overall, although I do have my project pan and there are some items in that obviously, when I've got like 93, I would rather rotate and try and find ones to declutter and I'm not setting declutter goals because I just think it's a bit stupid. I think you should declutter naturally as you kind of fall out of love with products or because they turn rather than decluttering to hit certain goals. So I'm not setting any declutter goals, but I am hoping to declutter some blushes, um, but we'll just see what happens naturally. But yeah, I'm not going to finish any up because I'd rather rotate through them and use them all rather than concentrating on using one until it's done whilst the rest are sitting there going off. So that's my logic really. And I wish I could say that that is the category I own the most in, but it is not. Highlighter, I have 46 highlighters. There's, it's one of those ones, because makeup items are so small, it doesn't look like that much, but when you say 46, and that's what I think I mean about how valuable it is to do the inventory, because I think you can look at 46 highlighters, and it, it sounds mad because it's such a big number, but you can look at that and just be like, it, it doesn't take up very much space. Like, makeup is not big, I think that's part of the reason that it was able to go so out of control for me in the first place. It just doesn't take up a lot of space so you don't look at it as any individual item is kind of problematic until suddenly you're like I have no counter space because my beauty collection is taking over it but 46 as a number sounds so much scarier than looking at those 46 highlighters but anyway yeah so there are 46 of them they are worth $918.71 and I'm aiming to use up one this year moving on to eye makeup so I have nine eye primers worth $138 and 95 cents and I'm aiming to use up two this year. I have got 20 eye crayons worth $526.03. Again, I'm not aiming to use any of those this year. Eyeshadow singles, I have 97. I'm aiming to use up one this year and their opening value is $1,746.50. I then split my palettes into small palettes, which are basically anything from a duo so two up to five pans in a palette so they are my small palettes i opened 2020 with 22 of them worth 1087 dollars and five cents and then my large eyeshadow palettes which are anything from six shadows upwards i have got 61 worth 2576 dollars and 37 cents i just want to as well add in here that what i did was i counted up not just the palette numbers but the number of pans in each of those palettes so my actual eyeshadow pans i say pans with air quotes because the first one is crayons which there are 20 of then single eyeshadows which are 97 my small eye palettes have 88 individual shadows across them all and then my large palettes have 762 
individual eyeshadows within them which means that I'm actually opening 2020 across all those categories with 963 eyeshadows which is terrifying but the reason I wanted to take note of that is that next year I want to open with less complete shadows by which I mean that if I decide to declutter say a large eyeshadow palette but I want to keep two, pa two single pans out of that what I would do is declutter that would come off the palette would come off of my palettes part of my inventory um, and then I would work out whatever the palette was say it was to be really simple a $20 palette with five eyeshadows in it and then they would be worth four dollars each so if I was to take two of them I would add a quantity of two and a value of eight dollars onto my single eyeshadow inventory which would mean my single eyeshadow overall as a category would go up both in value and quantity but my overall eyeshadows would go down because the twenty dollars coming off of the large palettes would obviously outweigh the eight dollars being added on to my singles so i do just want to take note of that that although i've got goals to use some of this up and i obviously want my overall collection to go down if by whatever chance i start next year with potentially more singles than i had this year but i have less palettes and less overall eyeshadows i'll be quite happy with that moving on to eyeliners i have got 82 eyeliners worth $1,284.96. I don't even use eyeliner today. Um, and I do have a goal to use up one of them because I have it in my project pan. And I should have used it today, but I didn't. Mascaras, I have 24 mascaras that I'm opening 2020 with. They are worth $389.45. And I'm going to try to use up six this year. Brow products, I am opening 2020 with 18 brow products worth $377.64 and I'm aiming to use up four this year. On to lip products. I have 24 lip balms and primers worth $343.06 and I'm aiming to use up 10 of them this year. Lip liners, I am not aiming to use any up and I am opening this year with Then lipsticks, this is my biggest category. 157 lipsticks worth $3,021.17. And then liquid lipsticks, I have 55 liquid lipsticks. This is in addition to the normal lipsticks and they are worth $783.64. Lip glosses, I have got 30 lip glosses worth $675.99. My goal is to use up four this year. And then I've got this other category, which is kind of miscellaneous stuff like face palettes and my like one setting spray. And I have seven items in that category. I'm not aiming to use any of them up and they come to a total value of $283.53. And then sachet samples, I'm opening 2020 with three of them and they are worth a dollar each for the sake of the reverse rouge challenge. So $3. So my 2020 opening totals for makeup is that my makeup collection is worth $18,611.41. And that is across 875 items. I've got 50 items that I'm aiming to finish this year. So if I can finish those 50, that would be great. I would like to enter next year with it being under 800 quantity wise. But as I say, I don't want to set that in stone because I don't want to make declutter goals. I just want to declutter things naturally. But I would really like to be here next year saying that I... I'm starting the year with less than 800 makeup items. That is my 2020 makeup inventory. So on to skincare, I am opening 2020 with seven makeup removers for the face worth $122.95. I do think I'll finish all of them this year and potentially need to repurchase one before the end of the year. I'd actually probably allow myself two because I think I'd allow myself both a micellar water and then more like a balm makeup removing cleanser but I do think that category will be under control anyway by the end of this year which is great. 2020 opened with three eye makeup removers worth $49 and again I expect to finish up all three of them this year and maybe have to repurchase one within the year but either way it's the sort of category I'd like to have one product in. On to cleansers, that's one of my most problematic categories in skincare. I have 26 cleansers worth $444.21. I'm aiming to use up 10 of them this year. I opened 2020 with six toners worth $104.37 and I'm aiming to use up three of them this year. Quite an individual category here, Essence. 
I open 2020 with no essences and it's the sort of thing I would like to have one in that category. I am actually missing it in my skincare routine at the moment. I did have one that I bought and um, that I've actually finished so that's that's an under control category so I'm not too worried about that. Serum is another kind of individual category as far as beauty rehab goes. I have got three serums or I opened 2020 with three serums worth $148. I expect to use all three of them within the year and to have to actually replace them um, and I did also feel I was missing a couple of things within those serums so serums go up overall that's absolutely fine. Oils, I opened 2020 with six oils worth $148.97. I'd like to finish three of them this year. Eye cream, I opened 2020 with 21 eye creams worth $443.07. Now I'm saying eye creams, these are actually eye products so it also includes things like one use masks so because of that I'm aiming to use up 16 this year which sounds like quite a lot but if you think about the amount of one use masks that are in there it's not actually that bad so hopefully should be able to do it and get that category right down. Moisturiser, open 2020 with 32 moisturisers worth $778.78 and I'm aiming to use up seven this year. SPF, I opened with one worth $65. Again, I think I'll finish that obviously within the year and probably have to replace it. But again, that's quite under control. My skincare is either pretty much under control or there's a lot of it. It's a bit of a strange one. Masks are... The out of control one, I have got 42 masks worth $896.17 and I've not set a goal on what I'm using up yet for masks because for the past number of years I have been trying to use up all my minis whereas I've kind of got to a point this year where I'm looking at the products that I've got that are full size that were expensive and actually I'd rather try and get whatever use I can get out of them which might mean that I don't finish them or that I finish less quantity wise than I could if I was finishing up the minis but I'd rather get my money out of those products than finish up all these minis that I've got either in sets or as gifts with purchase or whatever. Sheet masks again I'm not setting a goal to use them up but I opened 2020 with 35 sheet masks worth $193.47. I then got miscellaneous treatments which are generally sort of spot treatments and sort of detoxy products. Eight of them were $393.20 and again no goals there. Exfoliators and peels I have got 12 worth $291.75 and I'm aiming to finish eight this year. Retinols I have three worth $169 and I'm not setting any goals on finishing them this year. Sprays I have got four facial sprays worth $38.48. I think I'll finish three of them this year and get that down to just being one. Body scrubs, I have five worth $111.64 and I expect to use all five up this year. Body wash, again, five worth $134.50 this time and again, I expect to use all five this year. Body masks, I have three worth $96 and I'm not expecting to finish any of them this year. Bath products, I have two worth $55.80 and again, I have no goals to use them up. I'm not worried about it as a category so it's fine. Body moisturisers I have 29 worth $890.91. I'd like to finish up six this year. Hand products I have got 11 worth $145.69. I've not set any goals but I actually at the moment in terms of what's going on the amount of hand washing that's going on I think I'll probably finish all 11 this year. Foot products I have got six worth $68.09 and I'd like to finish four this year. Perfumes I have got 28 perfumes worth $2,935.48. That is one of my like biggest categories value wise because I do quite like expensive perfumes so it is what it is but I'm aiming to finish up six this year. In care sashes I've got a lot of them. I've got 24 worth $24 and I would like to finish all 24 of them this year. Sorry, so my battery just died um, just in case anything's changed in the framing and it's distracting. But to sum up skincare, my skincare total, the value is worth $8,749.16 and that is across 322 items. I'm aiming to use up 114 items this year just from what I'm kind of trying to use. I would really like to enter next year with less than 200 items which would involve using up 123 items so if I could use up another 9 on top of that 114 that would be great um, which I think 
I could do just if I used up some sheet masks or whatever so I, I think that should be doable so I'm hoping I might be entering next year with less than 200 items of skincare. And then the last category to go through is my hair care inventory. Pre-shampoo products I have one worth $31.20 I'm going to try and use it up this year. Shampoos and conditioners now these are the two most problematic categories that I've got. So shampoos I get 16 shampoos worth $317.61. I'm aiming to use up two this year. I've said this like a million times so sorry if I'm just repeating myself but I don't wash my hair very often. I wash my hair like once a week so if you think about there being 52 weeks in a year that's 52 hair washes. Now say approximately I would have said in the past 10 of them would take place at the hairdresser but since we're A on budget and now B on lockdown say that I go to the hairdresser. I've been to the hairdresser once this year already um, and it's April so so say once that I've been already I went in February didn't go in March obviously I was supposed to be going in April but whether I will be going or not on obviously remains to be seen um so say hopefully I go again in May that will be two visits then June I won't go then July I would go August I'd probably get my hair done towards the start of July actually so I probably would be getting it done in August because I'd get it done before my birthday so it would still be six weeks later but it would be August. Um, September I probably wouldn't go, then October I would go and November I would go to get it done before I go on holiday and then December I'll go before Christmas. So say seven of those hair washes take place at the hairdressers that leaves me with 45 times to wash my hair. So if I get 16 shampoos I can use each of them three times or I can try and actually finish one or two. So overall like hair care is not as much of a problem and it's obviously nothing in comparison to the likes of my makeup stash but that is why having 16 shampoos is still very excessive. So I'm going to try and finish two up this year and my plan is once I've knocked those two out to rotate through the others. Then conditioner. I have 17 conditioners which sounds like more than shampoo but I have more miniature conditioners. So I have 17 conditioners worth $412.96 and I'm aiming to actually use up seven of them which I think should be quite doable because so many of them are like travel sized ones. Exfoliators, I have two scalp exfoliators worth $71 which I'm not going to aim to finish any of them this year. I have five hair masks worth $98.20. I'd like to finish four of them this year. Now whether that is entirely realistic if I'm also trying to finish seven conditioners or not. I don't don't exactly know but we shall see. It would be ideal if I could get that down to just having one left basically so we're still aiming for four. In shower treatments I have one worth $9.99 and I'd like to finish it this year. Heat protectants I have six worth $150.79 and I'd like to finish two this year. Leave-in conditioners slash detanglers I have three worth $52.74 and I'm not aiming to finish any of them this year. Oils I have three again worth $84 and again I'm not aiming to finish any of them this year. Serums and treatments I have six worth $161.48 and again not aiming to finish any of them this year. Blow dry products, so I've broken this down into three categories. So I've got blow dry balms, I have six of them worth $75.37, I'd like to finish two this year. Then I have blow dry sprays worth $53.30, I have six of them but again a lot of them are minis so I'm actually aiming to finish four this year and that will be the four minis out of my collection. Then I have mousse as well, so I have six cans of mousse worth $80.23 and I'd like to try and finish one of those cans this year. Styling products, so texture sprays, I have four worth $101.10 and I'm not aiming to finish any this year. I have five dry shampoos and conditioners, technically it's four dry shampoos and one dry conditioner but I've just lumped them all together, worth $91.04 and I'm aiming to finish two this year. Then I've got a category which is called miscellaneous styling products. Um, which is like kind of hair glitter, a couple of sort of balmy products and then some of the Orbe Restyle spray so I kind of, they all sort of, it was silly to have load three different categories with two things in each of them so I've just lumped them into one like miscellaneous styling category so there are seven products in total in that category worth $100.80. I'm aiming to finish two of those products this year, I think they'll probably both, both be the Orbe um, mystify restyling spray stuff. Just knocking two out would be nice, whatever two they are. Then onto hairspray, I have got 
six hairsprays and they are worth $92.07 and I'm aiming to finish up three of them this year. So again, I've got three minis, so it's not a huge quantity of product. I don't use a lot of hairspray and that's partly because I don't wash my hair very often, so I don't often want to be putting something that's going to be sticky and have a hold in it like hairspray because I don't want to have to wash my hair more than once a week basically so yeah I'm aiming to finish the three whether I'll actually finish them or not I don't know but it would be good to finish the three and they are three minis so although it's not a huge amount of product it would still be three like I would still be reducing the quantity overall by 50% which would just be nice to have three less minis rattling around. I feel like although what I've said is absolutely true in skincare about wanting to try and use up some of my big products just to get whatever value I can out of them. And that's particularly applicable to skincare because skincare is where I have been most happy to spend a lot of money, although my makeup is worth a lot more. That's more like a kind of fun thing that I get sucked in by colours and stuff. With skincare, individual products are more likely to be worth like a lot more money. So I want to try and get the money's worth out of those skincare products. Whereas for other categories, the miniatures really annoy me because they sort of rattle around and take up a lot of space and they're hard to organise. And I'd rather be left with like a couple of full size products than loads of minis rattling around so I'm kind of doing the opposite with hair care where I'm like I'm trying to get rid of these minis this year and just be left with the big products whereas I feel like for the last two years with skincare I've been going through these minis and kind of realising how long they actually do take to go through so skincare I'm kind of focusing more on the full size items just to get the value out of them whereas hair care it's a bit less likely to go off so I'm more like let's try and get the quantity down with hair care. Hair care overall as well as you can tell from the, the numbers so far is by far my least problematic of my three inventories. To finish off hair care I have two sashes worth two dollars. So hair care totals the value altogether is worth $1,985.88 which just sounds so nice in comparison to the other two so I would love to be able to get my other two down to that at some point but makeup it's probably never going to happen but hopefully skincare that could be an option one day and that is across 102 products and then in terms of what I'm aiming to use up I'm aiming to use up 33 hair products this year so I'd be really pleased if I did that because that would take me to under 100 hair products ideally I'd quite like it to be at 75 just to take it well under the 100 would be very nice. Those are all my individual inventories so all together my beauty inventory is worth my 2020 opening totals of my beauty inventory is worth $29,346.45 and that is across 1,299 items. So big scary totals but I say I've set my goals of what I'm aiming to use up and I'll also be decluttering this year so if you want to hear in more detail what I'm kind of aiming to do this year and the specifics that will be next Sunday's video when I'll be going through my 2020 beauty rehab practices so thank you so much for watching this I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in that video. Bye!